man, have you heard that solo? It's amazing. My son just played it for me yesterday, actually, because he's really into his Nintendo. And I thought, man, I've got to check that out. So today I've been just learning that solo, and I wanted to share it with you guys today. Also, I've got the PDF for you that you, if you fancy learning it yourself. Um, but also, I want to talk about some reasons why we should be trying stuff like this that's completely out of comfort zone. <laughs> Right, okay, before you all freak out, I know we don't normally talk about game music on this channel, but you know what? I'm really into good music, and that's exactly what this is. So that's why today we're looking at this tune, it's called Dolphin Shoals from Mario Kart. I think it's amazing, actually. Uh, if you're not met before, my name's Nigel. I run a thing called Sax School, and you can go check us out online. There's, we've got thousands of students learning all different styles of music, but to be fair, Game music isn't something we normally dig into. Now, I've got three reasons why we should be looking at music that's outside of our comfort zone, and I'll get onto that in a second. But first, you know what? Enough of me talking. Let's have a listen to this solo. I'm going to play it along with the track so you can, you can hear how the whole thing fits together. Here we go. Oh man, that's such a great blow. I love that solo. And I thought I'd crack out the zebra sax for this solo too. If you haven't seen this before, this is a project that I did last year. And you can check the video up here where I, uh, I customized this saxophone myself. And actually, I think it sounds amazing. It sounds really good in this style of music. Now, what I don't know is who the original saxophone player is on this Mario soundtrack. So if you know that, let me know in a comment down below because he's a stonking or she, he or she is a stonking saxophone player. Really, really good. Okay, so I mentioned that there's three reasons why I think we should try stuff like this that's outside our comfort zone. And to kick it off, let's look at the first one. So right out the gate, the very first reason why you should try stuff that's out your comfort zone, and it doesn't need to be something that's technically difficult like this, but it could be a different style, a different genre, uh, even maybe copying something off a different instrument. The main reason that we do it is because it pushes us outside of our comfort zone and forces us to learn some new skills. Even me, I learned some new skills learning this solo, and that's really, really inspiring. So it keeps you on your toes, it keeps you practicing interesting, and that could be, like I say, it could be learning something like this, which is a style of music that I haven't normally listened to very much, or it could be something completely different. You might be into straight ahead jazz, go learn a smooth jazz solo. Before you poke fun at it, see if you can copy it, see if you can get that style in your, in your playing. Or if you're a smooth jazz guy, go check out a, a Dixieland player or a or a contemporary um, progressive jazz player. Or if you're a pop player, check out some jazz. Or if you're a jazz player, go check out some pop or listen to some gospel music or try learning a classical tune. Now, inside sax score, it's one of the things we do a lot, actually. We cover all sorts of styles. Loads of our members are into ska or into blues or into pop or into commercial music or into classical. And we have got all different types of lessons in there for exactly this reason. Because every time we learn a different style, we're pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone and we have to learn new skills. So some of the things I had to learn looking at this solo today was the the lines were slightly different to the sort of things I would normally play. So that was a challenge. Also, the player's style was very different. So he uses a different vibrato. He uses a different sort of bend. He uses different sorts of grace notes to what I'm used to. And even the tone, 
Uh, his tone is different, very different to the way I would normally play. So it's a real challenge for me to try and imitate that style and to get it onto my saxophone. Now the second reason is super important because every time that you learn a new solo or a new melody in a new style, it helps you to understand the way melodies are constructed or the way great solos are constructed. It kind of demystifies the whole process because I'll bet that you'll find that you do the same thing that I do. You listen to something really complicated and your first reaction is, oh man, that is so difficult, I'll never be able to do that. But actually once you learn it, it really brings it into focus and most of the time you'll find that uh, a new style, something that sounds complicated, is actually really easy when you break it down to its in like separate elements. A great example of this is this solo actually. So something that I hear students talking about a lot, and there's lots of people talking about it on the internet, are enclosures. Enclosures, what the hell are enclosures? Well, look, a lot of people get confused about it. It is an important technique. It's something that's really useful in more advanced uh, improvising with the way that you construct your melodies, I guess. But the concept of an enclosure is dead simple. Basically, instead of going from one note to the next note, you do a little whoop de doo to get to that note, okay? Maybe the note above, the note below. You, you weave a little line like this. Instead of going from A to B, you go -a -loo -a -loo -a -loo. This solo is packed with them. For example, check out this amazing line from the solo. So it starts here, and it goes down to here. Let's just look at that little section. So this is what it sounds like. Man, the first time you hear that, it's like, wow, what on earth is going on there? It sounds way, way complicated. But if you break it down, it's nowhere near as complicated as you, as you might think. So we're over a D minor 9 chord here. Okay, D minor 9. This is on the alto saxophone. So the D minor 9 chord is a D, F, A, C, and an E at the top. So have a look at this melody, the way it's constructed, because we've got loads of those anchor notes or chord tones in this melody line. So we've got the D here, we've got the A, we've got the um, F, and then we've got the D. So now rather than just using a boring line like that, what we're doing is we're weaving a little melodic line that goes around all of these notes to get to our destination. So now we've got this. And he keeps going on like that, just using these enclosures to weave his way around those anchor notes or the important chord tones to get to the end of the line. Anyway, I'm getting a bit carried away here, but you can see the point, right? By learning a new song or a new solo, you get to discover all this amazing stuff. And those are things that then you can take back and use in your own style for whatever other type of playing you prefer to do. Let's look at point number three. Right, point number three is super important. If you are ever feeling stuck in your practicing, if you're feeling like you're at a dead end, you're not quite sure what to practice, you're feeling unmotivated, you feel like, oh man, I just gotta do another 15 hours of long tones and scales this week, ah! If you feel like that, then it's time to learn something new. Learning something new is the best way to get yourself back motivated on the saxophone. You know, you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, you're trying something new. You might not like that style, but you're gonna learn some new skills, you're gonna make some progress, and it's gonna get you excited about playing some saxophone. And you know what? Going through that process of learning a new tune, learning how to play in a, in a slightly different style, it's gonna really boost your tone, your control, uh, your finger technique, everything. So it's a great way to stay motivated, and that just by itself is a fantastic reason why, forget all the other stuff, why you should definitely always be trying to learn something new. Hey, I really do hope that this lesson helps you, and don't forget there's tons of other stuff on my channel that you can check out if you wanna find out a bit more about improvising or about tone control or practice techniques. But if you really wanna push yourself ahead, then go check out what's going on inside SAC School. We've got thousands of students using our lessons every single day, and there's tutors on hand in there to help you too. So it's just a great resource to, to get you playing on track, keep you motivated, and also to help you to try something new. Also, don't forget you can get the PDF for this. Now, we're doing a new thing in SAC School where I've just got a single place where you can log in to get access to all of my free stuff. We call it the SAC School Locker. There's a link down below here. Uh, you can go find it from our blog. Just 
pop your email address in and you can sign up for the locker. And that way you get access to this PDF plus all the other free PDFs that I've got on my blog and all the new stuff that we're putting out too. So go check it out. And hey, most importantly, keep practicing hard. And I'll catch you next time.